Are y'all ready for the word? Let me ask one more time. Are y'all ready for the word? Are you really ready for the word? Hallelujah. We give God praise today. If you're not already standing, if you'll stand to your feet. We've been in our She Said Yes month all month long. Hallelujah. Have y'all been blessed? <laughs> Have you been blessed? Hallelujah. This, this month has been amazing. It's been amazing. And uh, y'all hear me say it all the time, but I, I believe that New Life has some of the most amazing, anointed, phenomenal preachers and teachers in the kingdom of God. Amen. And I mean, these, these women have been phenomenal this month. I mean, phenomenal. Can you praise God one more time for them? Come on, come on. They, they've been amazing this month. Hallelujah. So I praise God today. Uh, you know, there's a saying that says all good things must come to an end. I don't really believe that. You may need to put a pause, but if it's good... It keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. Amen. So I am excited. I'm excited to um, introduce to some and present to others uh, our final preacher for this time around. Amen. Our final preacher for this time around. I want you to receive with a thunderous applause Minister Sandra Smith as she comes and preaches the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning, everyone. It is a good day. It is a great day to be on the Lord's side. Amen. Amen. I just want to say this last, last week's message, Jesus really is Lord, had me praying and seeking God one more time. Are you sure what you gave me to share is what I'm supposed to be sharing? And he said, I'm sure. And I said, okay. He said, what I need for them to know is that, is that last week the message restored us. But this week, it's time to execute. It's time to get moving. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go before the Lord. Lord God, I thank you for this day, God. I thank you for all the ways that you made, God. God, I thank you right now, God, for this word, God, that will go forth, God. I thank you that their ears are already open. Their hearts are ready to receive what your word says today, Lord God. Thank you right now for this chance and this opportunity, Lord God. I will forever give you all the praise. I will forever give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's quickly go to the scripture as recorded in Psalms 37 and 23. Psalms 37 and 23. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 37 and 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way again the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way and just for a little while I want to preach this sermon called get to stepping get to stepping it's time to execute get to stepping amen you may take your seats 
Amen. And just looking at that first part of Psalms 37 and 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Let's break it down. That word steps means our course of life, the way which we go. Then it goes on the steps of a good man. A good man, let's talk about it. It can't be what we call a good man because every once in a while, every good person gets sidetracked. Even throughout the Bible, many good people got sidetracked and they messed up. So based on what we call good, we can look at Noah. He was a good man. He built the ark, but he got drunk. We can also look at Moses. He was a good man. He led the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery, but he killed the man. Peter was a good man. He was a part of God's uh, church. He was a part of God's uh, inner circle, and he was a pillar in the church. But he swore, cussed, and even cut off a soldier's ear. So this term good man cannot be based on what we consider as good. The Bible says no one is good except God. See, God knew that our good was not going to measure up to what he needed to be, what it needed to be for us to be right in a right relationship with him. So he sent his son Jesus. And what Jesus did, he took our place of no good and we received God's nature of good. The steps of a good man are ordered. This word ordered means established or strengthened and directed. Our steps are directed. That means we have divine guidance. Our steps are established and they are strengthened. And this means that they are upheld to agree with the decision made earlier, but not only of that, they are made firm, they are steady and solid. Now that's enough to give God some praise and go on to the house today. Because basically what, he's, basically what he is saying is that our steps are ordered by the Lord and every step we take is upheld. It's as if God, hallelujah, got his hands under every step that we make, hallelujah. It's agreed upon with a decision made earlier. What was the decision that was made earlier? He said, I know the plans that I think toward you, plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future but not only that the steps you take they are made firm they are steady and they are solid hallelujah even though you may stagger to the left his hand is under you with every step every step that you make is steady and it's firm and it's solid it's based on the word of God what God word says you may stagger to the right but guess what your steps are made steady and they are solid hallelujah there's even some times that we may face valleys in our lives but he is still there every step of the way And knowing that whatever he has directed us to do, he has already given us divine guidance for our journey and he has upheld and made our journey firm. Get to stepping. This particular scripture was penned by David. You know David, he was the man after God's own heart. And it's basically saying that God has given directions as to the way that his people should walk. When we know that our steps, when we know that our course of life are ordered by the Lord, then we can know that failures are not permanent because every step that we take is steady and is solid. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can't get stuck right there because I have to share with you the steps needed to take. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Let's go to 1 Samuel 17. And there's a whole lot in this story. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize it up to the point that I need to get to. Hallelujah. This is the story about David and Goliath. 
And we all know that the Philistine army, they came together to fight Saul and the Israelites. And the Philistines were up on one hill, and the Israelites was all up on the other hill, and there was a valley between them. This Philistine, the Philistines, they had a soldier who had never lost a fight, old Goliath. And he approached the Israelites, and he tells them to choose someone to come and fight against him. Now, King Saul and his army, at that time, they became upset. They became afraid. But right about that time, David, Jesse's youngest son, who was in charge of keeping his father's sheep, he shows up after being sent to the front line to take food to his brothers and also to bring word back to the father that they were okay. And as David is talking to his brothers, Goliath shows up. And he starts shouting at the Israelites, and they all take off running from him. And they begin to tell David what the king promises to the man who will kill Goliath. See, there was a reward in killing Goliath. And then here come David's brothers. They begin to ask him why was he there, and they told him that his job was to tend to the sheep. Have you noticed how some people who always can tell you what you should be doing instead of tending to their own business and doing what they're supposed to be doing? In verse 32, we see where David begins to tell Saul that they should not be afraid of the Philistines and that he will go up and he will fight against Goliath. Now Saul's reply is in verse 33, and it was this. You cannot fight against Goliath because you are a young man and Goliath is a strong soldier. And this brings me to my first point of get to stepping. The first thing we got to do is we got to step over. Somebody say step over. step over. We have to step over the buzz and the noise of the people. Those people telling us that we can't do what God called us to do. I call them the limitators. No, it's not a word. It's my word. Limitators. Hallelujah. They set, li they set limitations on us without even knowing the power that is at work within us. Anybody had some limitators in your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at David's limitators. David's older brother was the first one to set some limitations on him by trying to send him back to where he come from. See, we have to be like David when the limitators show up. David could have easily defended himself because the father sent him there, but he remained quiet and was not swayed by the voice of the enemy. David knew that with God all things are possible. Can I tell you that sometimes that the buzz and the voice is of our family and our friends telling us what God told us to do is not going to work? The limitators, they are the voice of limitation, which tells you that you can't do it. Or they might be the voice of manipulation, which tells you that you don't have what it takes to go there. You don't have what it takes to do that. This voice, it may be the voice of Im imitation, intimidation, I'm sorry, that tells you that you are not adequate enough for the task at hand. But when you get to step in, there's going to be that one person. They're going to speak up against you. Yes, they will. And they're going to remind you of what you don't have and what you can't do. See, they have placed God in a box. And what they're trying to do is get you to place God in a box. But just know that when you submit yourself to God and his plan for your life, you have power to resist the voices. And they have to flee. They have to flee. Don't be swayed by the voices of the limitators, but you keep on stepping into God's greater for your life. Scripture says there is nothing too hard for God. If he told you to go for it, then go. If he told you to do it, then do it. See, David could have easily stepped back, but he stepped over the noise of the limitators. Hallelujah. So then David encounters another limitator it was King Saul that set limitations on him based on his outward appearance 
See, what the king saw in David, not what was in David, is what he couldn't handle the task at hand. That's what he thought, what he saw. But there was someone greater on the inside of David. Scripture says that God, he looks at the heart anyway. Can I tell you that people will look at where you was born, what side of the track you was born on, the color of your skin, what kind of education you have, and we and they will count you out. But you got to get to stepping and step over the buzz of the naysayers because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's a picture that I saw on social media a few days ago. And it was a picture of a frog with some buck eyes. And it, on the picture it said, a frog decided to reach the top of the tree. And all the other frogs standing around, uh, standing around him said, it's impossible, it's impossible. But still the frog reached the top. How did he do it? Because he was deaf. And he thought everybody was encouraging him to reach the top. So the moral of the story is to be deaf to negative thoughts, to be deaf to the noise of the limitators. See, he, they said it's impossible. But we know with God on our side, it's impossible. Impossible is the same letters as I'm possible. Hallelujah. How many of you know that it's, it's possible for us uh, to reach the top because God got us every step we take. Every step is steady and is solid and he upholds it based on what he already said. Get to stepping. After David receives Saul's blessing in verses 38 through 40, we see where Saul takes his own clothes and he dresses David in his armor. Now David, he tries to walk in Saul's armor, but he couldn't because he had not worn that type of armor before. So in verse 39, you know what David did? He took it off. David took it off and David steps out of Saul's armor. And in verse 40, it tells us that he picks up his shepherd's stick. He picks up five round stones from the stream and with his slingshot in his hand, he goes to fight Goliath. So not only do we need to step over the limitators, verse 39 said that David steps out of Saul's armor. So the next thing we need to do is step out. See, Saul thought that his armor was the best way for David to move forward. He thought that what he used to achieve a certain outcome was a proven strategy for David. Sometimes people will tell you that if you're going to achieve A and B, that you must use this or you got to use that. We have to step out, step out the comfort zone and our safe place to do what God told us to do. Hallelujah. Step out of people trying to get us to do what God told us to do with the things he told them to use. It won't work. It won't work. See, anybody in their right mind, they knows that to fight a giant, we need more than just a slingshot and five stones. However, if what you used in the past to slay the lion and the bear it worked for you back then. Why would you try to use what someone else is used when they are scared of the enemy? See, Saul should have fought this fight with Goliath, but he was scared. See, we got to step out of our comfort zone of being on the safe side, and we got to hear what God wants us to use and do that instead of using and doing what everyone else is doing. See, we can step over because God has called us to do it. Hallelujah. Not what someone else, is ha someone else have, but what we already have. Scripture says in 2 Peter 1 and 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. For it is God, hallelujah, who works in us, hallelujah, to fulfill his will for our life so it's his power 
working in us to do what pleases him. Now I have to stop on this road and put a kickstand right here because I have a very important question for you. Why are you out here trying to climb up, I'm about to hit somebody now, climb up on the rough side of the mountain when he done already told you that you can speak to it and it will move? Oh, 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 I know you doing that because that's what they've been doing. But what did God tell you to do? See, we don't have to climb up no rough sides of a mountain. All we have to do is get to stepping and everything, hallelujah, that's in our way of where we're trying to go, it has to move. Get to stepping. Listen, if our steps are ordered and we need to get to stepping, we got to step over the limitators. We got to step out of our comfort zone and in our safe faith place. And the third thing we need to do is step up. We see where Goliath, he was stepping toward David. And all the while he's stepping toward David, he was throwing out insults to David. Verse 45 through 47, David opens his mouth and he says something to the mountain. He said, you have come here to fight me with a sword, a spear, and a knife. <laughs> yeah, but I came to fight against you with the authority of the Lord God Almighty. See, when we get to stepping, giants, they are going to come out from everywhere to get a sidetrack. But we must say something. He goes on to say, today, I will defeat you. Not I might defeat you. Not I, I may defeat you. Not I'm hoping to defeat you. But I am going to defeat you. I'm going to cut off your head to prove that I have defeated you. And I will feed you and your soldiers to the bird. Yeah, you got to say something. Hallelujah. He said, it's the Lord. He is the one who is fighting this battle for us. And he made us strong enough to win already. Can I tell you, you've already been made to win? He said, I always causes you to triumph in everything. It's the Lord who fights for us, but we got to get to stepping. In verse 48, we see where David steps up, and he quickly runs towards Goliath. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. If we want to get to stepping, we got to step up to the very thing that is a giant in our lives. That very thing that's keeping us from where God wants us. Step up to fear. He's not giving us a spirit of fear. We got to step up to unforgiveness. He's already forgiven us. Hallelujah. For everything past, present, and future. Hallelujah. We got to step up to shame. How many of you know there's no shame in this game when you're on the Lord's side? Hallelujah, Jesus. We got to step up to insecurities, to worry, to pride, and to selflessness. Can I tell you that giants, they do fall. But the songwriter says, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Anybody got some giants today that you need to be like David? Oh, you don't have to take out a sword and a spear. All you need to do is use the word of God. Hallelujah. We know, we know. Hallelujah, Jesus. We know that David killed Goliath with a sling and not five stones, but one. See, to fight this battle, you only need one stone. See, the Bible calls him the chief cornerstone, and that is Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every giant must fall. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
See, King David, he was a good man too. He slayed the giant, but he also committed the adultery. The steps of a good man, they're ordered by the Lord. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you're even going today. Your steps have been ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. If our steps are ordered and we need to get to stepping, we got to step over the limitators. We got to step out of our comfort zone and safe place and move as God has instructed us to move. We need to step up to the very thing that is a giant in our life that, that keeps us from where God wants us to be. But then there's the fourth thing we need to do. Hallelujah. See, David used a slingshot and a stone to kill Goliath. And over in chapter 18, we see where because David got the step in, he made an important officer in the Saul's army. So what David did, he stepped out of tending to the sheep. And he stepped in to that which pleased God. The fourth thing you need to do is step in. Well, what do we need to step into? We need to step in to the very place that God designed for us. We need to step in to the very thing that God designed for us. We need to step in to what's already ours. We need to step in to our season. We need to step in to our destiny. We need to step in to our prepared place it's time to get to stepping get to stepping get to stepping get to stepping it's time to execute hallelujah Jesus glory to your name the last thing that we need to do we need to get to stepping to step means to advance and progress when the scripture says in his steps that our steps are ordered by the Lord this implies that we're advancing in Christ that we are attempting to move forward and make forward progress but I cannot tell you hallelujah that according to 1 Samuel 18 and 14 David won hallelujah all his fights huh? why did he win because the Lord was with him if you get to stepping if you place one foot in front of the other you don't have to worry about being alone why because God is with you he said he'll never leave us nor will he forsake us hallelujah he is with you. You will move into what God called for you. You will do what God ordained for you to do. But you got to get the step in. You got to execute the plan that he has on your life. Well, minister, how do we get to step in? I'm glad you asked. We get to step in. We step by faith. Hallelujah. Faith is simply taking the next step. Hallelujah. See, Peter, hallelujah, he took one step to get out of the boat and onto the water. Peter was doing just fine when he focused on the next step. But he got in trouble, hallelujah, when he lost sight, hallelujah, of the next step. What next step, hallelujah, what next step, hallelujah, has God asked you to take? Get to step in. We got to get to stepping. See, when we put our faith in Jesus, uh, that sets us up to step by faith uh, with our trust and our dependency on God. Get to stepping. Why? Because he won't fail us. Uh, he's never lost a case. Uh, he's never lost a case. Uh, he's never lost a patient. He's never lost, period. Hallelujah. We can trust him. Because he's trustworthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. And even when it seems like, hallelujah, that you're losing the battle, I want you to be like Elijah. See, to Elijah, when he looked around, he saw horses and chariots had surrounded him on every side. Hallelujah. And it seems like there were more against him than were, uh, than were with him. So he prayed to the Lord to open his eyes so that he can see. And the Lord did just that. And he opened his eyes and he took another look. Hallelujah. 
See, what he saw at first was not what he saw the second time around. When you get to stepping, can I tell you, it may seem like there is more against you than for you, but know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. You've been looking at things, hallelujah, from a human level, hallelujah, but it's time to get to stepping, hallelujah, and you can see things, hallelujah, from a sky level, hallelujah, you will see that everything that you need that pertains to life and death, he's already given it to you, we can trust God in, hallelujah, we can trust God with, hallelujah, every step, hallelujah, why, he said, Lo, I am with you, even until the end of the earth, hallelujah, get to stepping, we walk by faith and not by sight, I said we walk by faith and not by sight, hallelujah Jesus, but can I tell you what happens when we don't step and we don't step in faith, what we see in the physical will cause us to turn back like Lot's wife. What we see in the physical will cause us to sink like Peter did. What we see in the physical will cause us to doubt the call on our life due to feelings of inadequacy, just like Moses. But when we, when we step by faith, when we get to stepping, it causes us to rejoice even before it happened. Like the one leper out of the 10 that came back, you may not see it right now, because if God said it, it's coming, hallelujah. Get to stepping, step by faith, put one foot in front of the others. Whatever you need, it's already, it's already done, hallelujah. Get to stepping, hallelujah. You don't have time to waste, it's time to execute and do that, hallelujah, that God told us to do. We can't wait. We can't wait till the battle is over. We got to step. We got to step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get to stepping. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to execute what God told me to do. I'm ready to go in the trenches. That's what he told me to do. There's some people down there that need to be pulled out, but they won't come out until I get to step in. Get to step in. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time. It's time to make some manifestations move. God told us, hallelujah, this was a year of easy. Hallelujah. He said he'll lay nothing he'll fill in on us. He said get to step in. Get in alignment. Hallelujah. With everything that I told you to do. Don't let fear hold you back. You got to step over fear. Hallelujah. Don't let your inadequacy hold you back. You got to step. You got to step. You got to step. Get to stepping. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I'm ready. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. See, God said somebody, hallelujah, Jesus, somebody here today, you're right down the edge of the step. Woo. You're going forward and backwards, trying to figure it out. But he said, don't try to figure it out because I've already worked it out. Just take the steps. Get to stepping. Step into it. Step into it. Get to stepping. 